Hackers are targeting fuel pump card processors, Plunder Vault charges towards Intel CPUs, and Amazon security cameras come with security woes. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for December 17th, 2019. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. We've got lots to cover, so let's get right into the news. Point of sale malware does not just affect grocery stores and big box retailers. Visa of North America is alerting merchants of new point of sale malware that is now being deployed at gas station pumps. Security alerts from the payment processor were published in November and December, stating that at least five incidents were being investigated. Now, why are these being targeted? Well, Visa's payment fraud disruption team believes attackers have found a vulnerability in the way gas pump pay stations work. These general do not support chip and pin transactions, while the credit card machines inside the shops actually do. That means that the pump station reader is still working on the older, not as secure, magnetic stripe reader. Attackers found that they could intercept unencrypted credit card data from these older machines as the data is being transferred to the gas station's main network. The attackers are trying to gain a foothold on fuel dispenser networks of merchants. Attackers sent phishing emails to employees in the first known successful attack where the employee clicked a link in the email and that installed a remote access Trojan on the network. The point of sale network was not segmented at all, so the attackers were able to move from one machine to another to find their target. The malware works by continually scraping RAM in the network's computer for anything that looks like unencrypted credit card payment details, which are then uploaded to the server held by the attacker in a remote location. Now, Visa was able to link two of the five attacks this year to a cybercrime group called FIN8, that's F-I-N-8, by recovering command and control domains that FIN8 had previously used during their investigation into these new hacks, which points to the cybercrime group. Now, Visa's team also found that the malware and the tactics in these attacks were also the same ones used by Fin8 in previous attacks. Merchants can implement newer chip and pin technology at gas pumps or encrypt the data from these older machines to protect their customers. Now, Visa will be holding merchants liable for any fraudulent use of cards if they do not update their payment systems by October of 2020. Researchers at three different universities in Europe, the University of Birmingham, UK, KU Leuven of Belgium, and the Graz University of Technology in Austria, released a disclosure detailing a high severity attack that impacts Intel desktop, server, and mobile CPUs. The researchers dubbed this attack Plunder Vault, since it works against Intel's highly secured section of the CPU that controls voltage and frequency, even overclocking for gaming as well. Now, the section is Intel's Software Guard Extensions, or SGX for short. It's a powerful software part of all modern Intel CPUs that not only is used for voltage and frequency control, but it is also allows for developers to create secure enclaves, since this is a highly secured environment. Developer enclaves are isolated at a hardware level on the CPU, so changes don't usually affect other parts of the machine, and it's also encrypted. The researchers found they could use two older known attacks to hit their target, the SGX. The two attacks used were Rowhammer, which was used for bit flipping, which we're very well versed in, and Clockscrew, which uses the CPU's dynamic voltage and frequency scaling management system to take control of a computer. Combining parts of both of these attacks created Plundervolt, which can alter SGX data by changing the electrical voltage and frequency by using the CPU's energy management system. Now, Plundervolt does not affect the SGX secrecy, but it does add bugs to the data, so the output could have errors. Now, this could allow an attacker to extract an encryption key from the SGX as well. Now, other than introducing errors in data that could affect encryption, Plundervolt also works very quickly and efficiently. So unlike previous CPU attacks, this attack does not actually crash a system. Luckily though, it cannot be used remotely since Plundervolt requires a local app to run on the infected machine. It also cannot be used from virtualized environments, so it would likely only be used in targeted attacks. The researchers have posted a proof of concept on GitHub as of last 
last week, and Intel was notified in June of the issue, and they released CPU firmware and BIOS updates that patch Plundervolt. Now, since this affects desktop, server, and mobile CPUs, including Intel's 6th to 10th generation processors and Xeon processors, users should check their systems for updates as soon as possible. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my supporters over on patreon.com slash threatwire. My hush puppy perk level patrons are awesome for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, keep them coming, they're adorable. And if you wanna support Threatwire but you don't wanna be a Patreon supporter, I have opened up an online store of Threatwire swag so you can show off your support. So check out snubsy.com slash shop. I'll put that link down in the show notes down below to get access to t-shirts shirts, stickers, and even my own digital photography, all of which supports my shows. And last off, I just wanted to say happy holidays. On to the rest of the stories. Over the weekend, a slew of news was published about ring cameras getting hacked and creepy attackers shouting cruel, rude things at the customers that they were watching through the lens of the cameras. This alone sounds like a major vulnerability in Ring cameras, but it was actually caused by credential stuffing. Now, credential stuffing occurs when an attacker uses a list of known leaked usernames and passwords and tries them on other sites to see if a consumer reuses their passwords across multiple platforms. In the case of the Ring cameras, the consumers were reusing these passwords, so attackers found them from previous leaks. None of the hacked cameras had two-factor authentication enabled on them either, so it was easy enough for a person with malicious intent to log in, turn on the camera, and start speaking through its microphone to the camera's owner. Several examples were shared, such as one where a woman was yelled at while she was sleeping, another where what sounds like a child is actually talking to the consumer about all the exploits that he's done, and another example, a man speaks to a little girl in her bedroom and tells her that he's Santa Claus and that they should be friends. Ew. But in each of these cases, the passwords were reused. In the case of Ring cameras, users can implement better security by using fresh new passwords that they have never used on any other sites and adding two-factor authentication so any login attempts require an additional code that is sent to their phone. Ring could also force two-factor authentication for users, and they could also set up defenses against credential stuffing attacks. Now, upon further investigation, Motherboard found that attackers are, in fact, using config files that quickly check a website like Ring's website against a series of leaked usernames and passwords. And this file was selling on forums for a whole $6. To add to the creep factor, an entire podcast was created for people to live stream and listen in on Ring camera hacks. The podcast is called Noldcast, and it streams live to Discord, where hundreds of users can listen in as a host trolls consumers with bad password hygiene. Now, while the mods tried to wipe everything related to the Ring camera hacks as soon as it hit mainstream news, journalists were able to screenshot quite a bit of the Discord chats. Amazon security camera woes do not even end there. The Amazon Blink X-T2 security camera had several vulnerabilities that would allow an attacker to take them over completely. Tenable researchers disclosed their findings last week, showing that the flaws could allow an attacker to listen to audio, view the camera footage, Footage, or even set up a botnet in the device. Amazon is patching the devices to firmware version 2.13.11 to protect against this issue. Now, Blink received seven CVEs from Tenable, with the most serious being a command injection flaw. An attacker could use DNS poisoning or hijacking to modify the content of data sent to Blink devices, taking over communications that are usually just used for updating or obtaining network information. The other flaws were not as serious, but all of them did require a patch. Now, while there is not a good way for consumers to check if a device has actually been hacked, updates for Blink cameras are automatically pushed, so ensuring the device is patched just requires checking the firmware version. Now before I leave, I want to say thank you so much to Jimmy, Dan, Hugs for Rent, very cute name, I love it, Adrian, Anarchism, and Yosef, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you so much. All of you are awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season, and I will see you on the internet.